the first thing I wanted to ask you is um, why your organisation is, is pursuing a net zero goal. What are the benefits that you've identified? And why is it important to you as a company? That's great, Elliot. Nice to talk to you. Um, well, clearly we all recognise climate change is one of the biggest challenges we face, you know, in, in our industry in particular, where we see changing weather patterns. Um, we've been through droughts in recent years, but also seeing the impact of variable uh, rainfall events uh, leading to flooding both of areas, uh, but also of our sewers and our systems as well, and the rivers in which we feed into. Um, and, and that means that if we don't want to see our services impacted grossly by that, we've got to adapt. Um, but we can't do it on our own. That needs to be done responsibly um, and collectively. Uh, we all need to act against that. Um, and, and I think whilst we have targets sort of 20, 30, 40, 50, some organisations are going to have to go early. We've set ourselves target for net zero emissions by 2030. We've got a roadmap that sets out that obligation of what we're trying to have to achieve. Um, but we also want to go beyond that later and become a carbon negative business by 2040. Um, and as I said, that means huge change across our business, uh, as well as sort of our target to cut carbon emissions. We're going to be generating our electricity. Um, we're going to be reducing the emissions from our treatment works, um, but also looking at our fleet, uh, our cars, our vehicles, and how we um, decarbonize those, um, but also looking at the solutions for treating uh, water, such as um, nature-based solutions, uh, working with the environment much more closely, planting more trees. You know, there's an awful lot to do. We could go on, um, but uh, we need to make sure we keep going that. You've given that kind of tour of all the breadth of action and activity that you're involved in, but maybe you could zero in on one or two specific examples of how you're making those ambitions a reality and how, how you've gone about that. Great. And, you know, let's start. You know, we've, we've made huge progress already. We've seen a 70 percent reduction in emissions since 1990 for our, for our business. Um, and, and we've done that in a number of ways. Uh, it does involve buying certified renewable energy. That's been a, a big start. But we've also looked at implementing innovative heat recovery uh, processes. We've clearly driven energy efficiency across the business, looking at, at how we use energy and how we reduce that. And if, if you remember, ours is a very much energy intensive business. It's one of the larger consumers because we lift the heavy product, which is water, um, vast distances. And when we're cleaning, we use generally a lot of air and oxygen, which means energy required within that. So reducing energy is really important for us. But we're also self-generating. Um, we generated 311 gigawatt hours last year. It's about 23% of our own electricity needs. And that's a really important part of our future as well uh, to make sure we can be more self-sufficient. Uh, it does reduce cost to customers, which is great news, but also, of course, it's, it's renewable energy and, and better for the environment too. What do you see as the most significant hurdle you've grappled with and how have you managed to overcome that hurdle? Well, I suppose this is new. You know, we're continually learning. Um, you might say we don't have all the answers yet. Uh, and, and that's true for industry uh, globally, I think. You know, we're still working that hard. Um, but we also have learned that the whole business will need to step up for this. This isn't something about a small team off on the side working on net zero. This is about engaging and working with the whole business. Um, we're also realising that sort of we're going to have to look at different ways of delivering projects. You know, part of our programme is installing the biomethane plants that will need um, experts in place to support us. We're not going to have those all in our, internally in our, in our business, so we need to bring people in who've got that experience, but also look at how we deliver that because actually our customers may not pay for all of that because there are, um, there's value to be created. And we might be able to get better value by working with different partners who can invest with us uh, and between us work, get the benefits. So that's very different in terms of how we start thinking of the business. What do you wish you um, had known when you set off on this journey first? <laughs> if I was to sit back and say, I wish we'd started earlier, 
but hey, you know, we, we are where we are. And, and we're already on, on an early trajectory. You know, we're, we're looking to hit zero emissions by 2030, which is ahead of most industries and, and ahead of the government target. But we think that's the right thing to do. Um, but um, what we also know is that, you know, to do this right, we've got to work across the business. There's, we've talked about collective responsibility before. This is about the whole business collaborating, whether it be reducing energy, whether it be looking at new sources of energy, whether it be looking at how we innovate around preventing emissions from our, our treatment processes, um, and also working very well with the supply chain on that basis as well, which again, we may come on to a bit in a minute. Um, I think the other thing is messaging. You know, Sometimes people in our business have seen that as a cost. Actually, we see this as value creation. If you were speaking today to a company that was either considering or, or had just made that commitment, we're trying to make, trying to work out what that looks like, what to do next. What would you say? What would be the, the sort of things that you would recommend to them? I think, I think first of all, you know, have a clear goal, set it out very clearly what you're trying to achieve, and get everyone behind that. Um, and that, that means, sort of, in this case, know what you're measuring, know how to measure emissions, uh, and what that means, and be consistent in that approach. Um, and then you can start working out things like where your emissions are coming from, uh, which gives you the, the ability to start how you might control them. Um, I, think, I think the other thing we've learned is that we like to have a plan. We like to have a plan that has a start and a finish, and we know what we're doing all the way through. Well, as I've said to you before, we haven't got all the answers, and if we wait till we've got all the answers, it will be too late. So we've got to move on and start that journey now uh, with the big things to do. How do you have any tips or advice in terms of how you've engaged with your supply chain or how you've engaged with your peers in, across the sector to more broadly drive this transition and change? Yeah, well, we, we've talk, talked about targets. You know, first of all, be clear on your targets and share those as a supply chain, what you're trying to achieve, because suppliers will know how to help you. Um, but, but also then start to work to build that, a more sustainable supply chain, um, understand what they are doing themselves because we can actually use their knowledge and learning to help us and they'll be working with other parties as well that they can bring that learning through so it really has to be a collaborative approach um, our procurement team is part of our net zero task force which is a sort of the way we are energizing it within the business but very fundamentally looking at using suppliers all the way through and, and if we can say our capital works our capital partners are tasked with carbon reduction as part of their contracts. It's built into targets of all schemes, um, but we're looking then to help us innovate, help us change the way that we deliver assets and the way that we work in future. Uh, and I think the final part is you need a common language. So we've started to set up internal training to make sure that everyone understands what we mean by net zero, by um, emissions targets, uh, but also how that translates into their day to day so that anyone in the business can help. What do you see as how, uh, the, some of the tools that you might be using or you might sort of think that would be good to develop so that businesses can, can help deliver more of that kind of change? I, I think there's a huge part for me in terms of working collectively. So if we talk, we look about, say, fleet management, everyone talks about decarbonisation of fleet. Um, but for that, you're going to need either um, points where you can fill with hydrogen or where you can charge vehicles. If each vehicle, each company tries to do that on their own, we're going to end up with a very ineffective matrix of, of charge and fill points. We've got a big milestone on this agenda coming up. We, we're um, a few weeks away, just um, literally weeks away from um, the COP26 conference summit, which obviously is a, is a big milestone for the world, big milestone for the UK. Um, and uh, there's a lot of energy and agenda around that. Uh, how, are you, have you got any particular hopes or expectations about things that you'd like to see coming out of that moment? Right. Absolutely. I think we all have, haven't we? It's sort of a, this is, this is a big, um, we want sort of consistency and transparency. Um, 
we want everyone stepping up to this, you know, both bit alongside businesses, but we want governments and regulators to really have a focus on what the vision is and how we're going to get there. Um, whether it be government policy, whether it translated into regulatory requirements, um, charges on businesses, uh, or work with our citizens sort of to get together to achieve this goal of uh, reducing emissions and keeping the one and a half degree temperature rise down sort of thing. So um, I think the other part which we're really pleased to see and, and is adaptation. You know, the impact, as I said right at the start, of climate change on our business is huge, changing weather events, um, which means that we will have to adapt and change uh, the assets that we have in the ground to make sure they're fit for purpose with rising sea levels or changes in, in, in drought or changes in, in flooding events. So having plans in place to help us respond and recover is, is going to be absolutely fundamental and, and for everyone to see that it is key as well. I think finally, we do need to talk about cost. You know, we, we know that we can't afford not to get to net zero. Um, there will be a cost there. Some of it will be self-funding, but some of it won't. And how do we fill that in and make sure that we actually fund this up front uh, and don't wait for someone else uh, to find money for us?